Ukraine plans on summer counteroffensive to oust Russian forces. The 18th week of Russia's war in Ukraine saw momentous geopolitical developments compared with marginal Russian gains on the ground. The European Union formally bestowed candidate status on Ukraine and Moldova on June 23rd. They had both applied within a week of Russia's attack on Ukraine in February. NATO expanded to include Finland and Sweden on June 29. Both countries applied in May. Once again, the speed of acceptance was unprecedented. NATO also announced it will expand its readiness forces from 40,000 to well over 300,000 soldiers and with more pre-positioned equipment and stockpiles, more forward deployed air defense and new defense planning. It is clear that while Ukraine is not being invited into NATO, it is coming firmly under the alliance's security umbrella. Over the longer term, we will help Ukraine transition from Soviet-era equipment to modern NATO equipment, NATO Secretary General Jan Stoltenberg said. NATO expansion is precisely the reason Russian President Vladimir Putin cited for invading Ukraine. On June 27, the world's seven wealthiest nations, the G7, issued their most strident support for Ukraine yet, calling on Russia to withdraw to internationally recognized boundaries, in other words to abandon its 2014 annexations of Crimea and Donbass, in addition to withdrawing from the parts of Ukraine it has taken this year. The G7's call bolsters Ukraine's maximalist territorial ambitions, which not all of its allies support. On June 28, the United Nations Security Council, UNSC, condemned a missile attack on a shopping mall that killed at least 18 in Kremenchuk. On the other side of an increasingly gaping geopolitical divide, China issued its strongest support for Russia to date when Chinese President Xi Jinping blasted US-led sanctions against Moscow. Nations need to reject the Cold War mentality and block confrontation, oppose unilateral sanctions and abuse of sanctions, and reject the small circles built around hegemonism. Xi was quoted as saying by the Chinese state news agency Xinhua. Putin, too, criticized sanctions as being responsible for the risk of hunger in the world, saying they prevented Russian sales of fertilizer. Western geopolitical gains took place against a Russian conquest of Severodonetsk town on June 24. Russia was also in the process of fighting through Lyschansk, the last city under Ukrainian control in the eastern Luhansk province. Luhansk Governor Sergei Haide said Severodonetsk would be abandoned, presumably to prevent the surrender of the fighting force there, as happened at the Azovstal Steel Works in Maripol in May. Unfortunately, we will have to withdraw our servicemen from Severodonetsk because it makes no sense to be in broken positions. The number of dead is growing, Haide said. The withdrawal was set to last a few days but seems to have been completed quickly as two days later the Russian telegram channel Rybar said Russia had control of Severodonetsk and the key logistics avenue to it, the bakhmut lyschansk Highway. Ukrainian forces also seem to have tactically retreated from Privilia and Bilohorovica. The Russians have barely captured Luhansk, and Donetsk is 50% under Ukrainian control. I wouldn't expect Russian progress until August. The Ukrainians have been dug in for seven to eight years and have multiple lines of defense because they always expected a frontal line of assault. What that means is slow Russian progress, not a given, and the Ukrainian capacity for counteroffensive.